Lindsay, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Um, what got you interested in the profession of law? You know, it, it's something that I've always thought about, even uh, as a as a child. I, I guess I was destined to be here because of uh, my schooling and where I went and the people that I was around. I've heard family law defined so many different ways. What What is family law to you and your firm? Family law is the practice of dealing with a the family in crisis. It's custody of children, property issues, child support issues, uh, abuse of children. Uh, it's families in need is what it really is. Uh, and uh, I think it's too restrictive the way they speak of it as matrimonial law in the East and in the North, New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, uh, because it's more than matrimonial law, but it, it doesn't include wills, estates, all of those kinds of things that uh, there are experts that do that sort of work. I know in, in family law there's custody issues and there's property issues. Right. Is there a particular arena that you specialize in? Well, I think the way to say it would be I specialize in the underdog. And as a result of that, I generally end up uh, representing more men on custody of children cases and more women uh, in property cases. But that's, you know, that's just sort of a gross generality, but that's the way it, I would probably suggest that I, that I do. What words would your clients use to describe you? Uh, ethical, honest, uh, and uh, single of purpose. I, I want them to come out where they should be uh, to be what's right and fair. Now I know family law is extremely stressful for the, for the client. How do you help them deal with those stresses? Well, I was hoping you were going to ask if it's stressful for lawyers, so I could say it absolutely is. Uh, you wouldn't believe I'm only 22 years old, but uh, <laughs> it is stressful for clients. And, and what I tell them, though, is don't worry until I tell you to worry. You're paying me money to worry for you. Now, I know you're passionate about the law. Uh, what else are you passionate about in your life? Well, I'm passionate about my family. I'm getting ready to have my first grandchild. Uh, a Bubba, I might add. Uh, I've been married 43 years. I've been a lawyer 43 years. Uh, I've been a pretty good chef for 43 years. So uh, that pretty much uh, characterizes me. What do you learn from your wife and from your daughters? Humility. Uh, it's, it's interesting how you can become self-absorbed uh, when you're in charge of a case and in charge of people's lives and then go home and find out that uh, uh, there are jobs and tasks that you, you need to get to work on. <laughs> I know you're board certified in family law. What, what's the difference really between someone who's board certified and who's not? What's somebody getting when they get a board certified lawyer? Well, the first thing they get is somebody that is a known quantity. There's a minimum of understanding of the law. You have to have been in practice five years. You have to have passed a test. You have to have had a recommendation from all of the judges whom you've appeared before. Um, and I think that's important. But I think there's a bigger step than, than specialization. And I think the bigger step is the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, which is the 1800 best lawyers in the country. And then there's a step above that, uh, which is the American College of Family Trial Lawyers. There's a hundred in the world, and there'll never be over a hundred. Uh, and I think that's the most, in, that's what people should look for if they really are looking for people at the very top of the profession. I know an attorney can't build a practice by himself. So tell me about the team that you've put together uh, and how they benefit you and your clients. I'm proud of this team. Um, this is really the, the second firm that I've built from scratch. And 
Um, this is a group of people, there are three board certified lawyers uh, plus myself, four total. Uh, but this is the best and the brightest of the young people practicing law that I know. Uh, these people are aggressive, energetic, compassionate, uh, all scholars, all writers. Um, and they actually are nice to me and like to hear what I have to say. It's kind of fun. You know, I want to go back and ask you, was there an impact moment for you in your life where the lights went off and said, boom, family law is for me? Yeah, there really was. Uh, 1972, three in that area, uh, I was representing uh, some developers here in town, a uh, major grocery chain, oil and gas companies, uh, doing a lot of what I now call floppy disk law. And uh, a, a fellow that I, I had a lot of respect for came up to me and said, you know, you're really wasting your time uh, dealing with, with oil and gas and real estate exclusively. You need to deal with people. And people are family law. And family law is really dividing real estate, oil and gas, company assets, which was something I did. So from there, it was a step to, I, I, I figured, you know, this makes sense to me. But then I decided I needed to develop trial skills to go with that. And so it's been a process in a period. And now I've probably tried certainly almost as many jury trials as, as any of the people that practice family law um, in this area, in this state, certainly in the country. And I know that unfortunately you probably don't get to win them all. So what do you, what do you learn about yourself when you um, lose a case or don't get what you really want to get? What's interesting about losing a case, uh, uh, that's a function of degrees unless you're talking about um, child custody. Child custody, that kid's going out, getting in the car, and going home with somebody. There's a winner and a loser there. And generally, it's the family and the child that are the loser, too, because they've been through that. But with property, it's, I think a win is beating the last offer. Uh, a loss is not beating it. Uh, and what I really think a loss is is if you haven't evaluated the case accurately and completely. And that's the one thing you want to try to avoid. Uh, there can be unreasonable people that require a case to go to trial. Uh, but if the lawyer is sharp and if I'm sharp, uh, I'll have us within the area of reasonableness to avoid those things. Why do other lawyers refer cases to you? A number of reasons, I think. One is, if they're referring and are not family lawyers uh, and aren't just in over their heads, they know that they'll get the client back. I'm not going to try to take the client and draw some wills and create a corporation and do a partnership. I'm, they're going back. The client's going back to the referring person. And the other thing is, uh, I thank folks. I let them know that, you know, without them I wouldn't be whatever it is that I am. And the final thing is results. I mean, this is 43 years of history, uh, and that's what they're referring to. First in your professional life, and then secondly, personally, how do you want to be remembered? Then when I said something, it was the truth. My word was, was it. Nobody needs a written agreement with me there. A lot of people don't like me. That's their choice. I don't think you'll find anybody that'll, that, that will tell you that my word's not good.